Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. A happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, a very different Mother's Day, of course, as we're not able to gather with family in the ways that we're accustomed to. Um, but nevertheless, it's an opportunity to celebrate the gift of motherhood, uh, both for those who are mothers and, of course, for all of us who have mothers. I also want to take an opportunity this morning just to um, just to praise God for all the people who have been so helpful in putting together our worship services over the last couple of months as we have dealt with the challenges of, a, of this pandemic and the stay-at-home order. And I am just grateful to God for, um, for our staff, for, for Katie and Monica and Carl, uh, but also to all those other people who have been helping out uh, every week or um, on occasion. Uh, just praise God for, uh, for Cinda Coleman and Callie, um, for Joseph, uh, Kissinger, Monica's uh, husband, and um, his helping to lead us in the hymns for uh, Maureen and Judy, uh, for Steve uh, Spencer, for, for Gary Stewart, for Ken and Jan Stewart. Um, so many people have contributed so much to making these services uh, come together. And just grateful for that and, and grateful for you uh, that you are joining with us in worship this morning also want to remind you that there are opportunities uh, to connect uh, throughout the week that uh, right after worship this morning at 11 o'clock here on Sunday, we have our uh, coffee fellowship time that you can join in by Zoom. Uh, if you don't have the link uh, for that from the blast, you can uh, call me or text me at 319-541-5978. Um, or send me an email and we'll get that link to you. Um, also, there are Bible studies. There's a Wednesday morning men's group um, that at least this week will be meeting at, on Wednesday morning at 9. There's a, a Wednesday afternoon uh, psalm study that I'm leading on Wednesdays at 2 in the afternoon. Uh, Women of the Word are, is meeting and you can contact Barb Jaquith about that. And, and the other women's Bible study is uh, going to be meeting soon and we'll get information to you about that as soon as we're able. Uh, but just grateful uh, for the opportunity to gather through the, the gifts of technology. join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. We know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Come, let us worship. Please rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn. Yeah. 
continue to try and live our lives, we are reminded of those uh, that truth from Scripture, that if we say we do not sin, we are de we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sin, we know we have a loving and faithful God who will forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So in that confidence, let us come before God and one another in confession, first silently, and then together using the printed prayer. In praying together, our Father, forgive us for thinking small thoughts of you and for ignoring your immensity and greatness. Lord Jesus, forgive us when we forget that you rule the nations and our small lives. Holy Spirit, we offend you in minimizing your power and squandering your gifts. We confess that our blindness to your glory, O triune God, has resulted in shallow confession, tepid conviction, and only mild repentance. Have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Know that in Christ you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Speak to us now as you have spoken to us throughout the ages. During this glorious Easter tide, reveal yourself and your will for our lives, that we might live as your Easter people. We seek your face, O Lord. Hear our prayer through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60, and tells of the death of Stephen, 
one of the first deacons and the first martyr of the Christian church. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the, at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When the, he had said this, he fell asleep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from, from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. And it comes from the words Jesus spoke to his disciples at the Last Supper. It is a reminder that Jesus is the focus of our faith and is all we need. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Jesus said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Peter. We're reading the second chapter and reading the first 10 verses. So let us attend the word of God for us this morning. Peter writes, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So with today being Mother's Day, as I was preparing for this morning's message and, and studying this, uh, this section of scripture, I was struck by the second verse. Like newborn babies crave spiritual, excuse me, craves pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Like newborn babies, we are to crave pure spiritual milk, so that we grow up, so that we mature into the, uh, the reality that we are a resurrection people, that we, we grow up into our salvation. And of course, if we are like babies who are supposed to crave pure spiritual milk, well, that brings to mind mothers. That's where milk comes from, right? Babies nurse, and they get, they get milk from their mothers. And that is what strengthens them and, and helps them to grow and mature. And of course, mothers do more than just nurse. Mothers, mothers um, help rear that child. They, they take that child and they nurture it. And as it grows and strengthens, and they also guide and, and correct and teach and provide that, that parenting, that mothering that we need in order to grow into healthy, responsible human beings. Healthy both physically and, and emotionally and psychologically and spiritually. Mothers are the source of milk. So when, when Peter says like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, we have to ask where, where do we go for that? And the church has had an answer for that for, well, for thousands of years. Back in the third century, St. Cyprian said that you cannot have God as your father without having the church as your mother. The church is, is our mother. The, the church is where we are to turn for that nourishment, for that nurturing, for that guidance and, and correction and mothering in our faith. The church is meant to provide what we need to become mature disciples of Jesus Christ. And of course, not all of us have good mothers. 
some people are raised with an absent mother or they're raised with a mother who is uh, emotionally or physically distant or sometimes unkind, harsh, cruel. Mothers aren't always what they're supposed to be. And though the church is supposed to be our mother, maybe your experience of the church has been of a, an unkind mother. Maybe the church has not been a good mother to you, but that, that's what it's supposed to be. That's what we long for it to be. Because you see, we don't produce our own milk. Okay? A baby needs a mother. A baby cannot produce its own nourishment. A baby can't raise itself. Children need parenting. Children need care and nurture and touch and nourishment. <clears throat> and that is true for us as we grow into our faith, as we are children of God. The church is, is meant to be that source of a spiritual milk that helps us grow and mature. And when we, we ask, well, you know, what, is, what does that milk mean? What is it we're supposed to be getting from the church to grow in our faith? And, and what are we as the church supposed to be doing with it? And I'm reminded of a, a, a statement that was put out by the Presbyterian Church many years ago in asking the question, what is, what's the church for? What is the purpose of the church? And they came up with a statement about the great ends of the church, the great purposes of the church. And those great ends of the church are these, the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social righteousness, and the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. That milk we are to receive from the church is first of all that, that proclamation of the gospel. We're to hear the good news for our salvation. We need to know, you know what, what the gospel's about. We need to hear about Jesus and that Jesus gave himself for us and that he, Jesus, having died on the cross, was resurrected and thereby defeated both death and sin that we might live new lives and thus live into our salvation. <clears throat> The church is to, to provide that shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God. That within the church, we are finding that, that encouragement, that healing, that shelter, and, and, and maturation, nurturing, as well as spiritual fellowship, being with, with others who are followers of Jesus, who are disciples, so that we can help one another grow. And the church is there to provide the maintenance of divine worship, that is, to, to help us to worship God, to recognize what it is to worship uh, well, to, to worship rightly, to keep our focus on, on God as the object of our worship and not those idols that tend to creep up in our lives. And the church is, is there to help preserve the truth, so when we come to the church, we hear truth. The truth about ourselves, the truth about God, the truth about, about creation and sin and fall and redemption and resurrection and, and the world to come. The church preserves those things and hands them on. The church is where we should find good theology, Theology that helps us be good disciples. And the church is there to help us receive and engage in the promotion of social righteousness. So that as we, as we hear the truth, we see how God wants the world to be, what God's righteousness looks like. And so we, we see the world around us with a new vision, 
and work to, to obtain that kind of social righteousness that God has created us for. And the church should be the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. So that the way we interact with one another, the way we interact with our community, the way we interact on, on Facebook and Twitter and all those things represents God's kingdom. Rather than the kingdom of this world, it represents the kingdom of heaven. Those, those things we should receive when we come to the church, those are the things that nourish us and, and help us mature in our faith and live into the reality that Christ's resurrection brings to us and to the world. And the fascinating thing about about the church as our mother, though, is that unlike our, our natural mothers, the church is composed of us, not individuals, uh, but individuals collectively who are the people of God. Peter says that, that as we come to Jesus, the living stone, that we also, like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house that is built up into the church. The church is not the building where we meet. We're the church, right? The building, of course, is important, and we're all very aware of that in these, in these days when we haven't been able to meet there. Okay. But you are the church. I am the church. We together are that, that spiritual uh, spiritual house that helps provide that spiritual milk through the power of the Holy Spirit working in and among us. We're called to be the church together and then to do these, these things, these great ends of the church. We mother one another and we mother the, the world as we are the church that God calls us to be. That's not the building. It's not, it's not the institution. It is the collection of, of the saints, of you and me and those followers of Jesus throughout the world and throughout time. Brothers and sisters, we are brothers and sisters because we have one father. We are brothers and sisters because we are co-heirs with our brother Jesus. And we are brothers and sisters because we have the same mother, the church. And if that is true, then we, we should be acting together to do these things, not backbiting, not fighting with one another, ridding ourselves of malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind, and instead loving one another and working together in our individual ways as we have been shaped as individual stones within the whole building, but working together. We need to do that now to provide that proclamation of the gospel, to provide shelter and nurture and fellowship to one another in different ways to gather and worship even when we're not gathered physically, to help, help bring truth to one another and to those around us, and to work for social righteousness. And that can be really hard right now. I'm sure most of you have, have heard the news about the murder that took place of a young black man who was out for a run in Georgia back in February. One more reminder that, that social righteousness is absent from our world. It is absent from our country. People are treated unrighteously because of their skin, because of their wealth, because of their education, because of their gender. We don't treat people the way we're supposed to. And we as the church need to call that out. We need to promote 
social righteousness. We need to do that by calling attention to where it's absent. And we need to, to uh, promote social righteousness by engaging in, in loving, productive ways. But what we cannot do is, is close our eyes and turn our backs. Just as, as a good mother does not close their eyes or turn their backs on their child when they are suffering or on their children when they are fighting with one another. We must be involved. We must engage. And that's true about racial injustice. It's true about economic injustice. It's true about environmental injustice. All those things. And notice that that social righteousness and the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven are the things that, that are the fulfillment of the other things that we are called to, to receive and, and to give within the church. Proclaiming the gospel, sheltering and nurturing one another, maintaining divine worship and preserving the truth. Even now, while we are socially isolated, we can work for a better, more godly society. Let us do that so that our mother might be happy with us and so that our father would take joy in us, that his name would be praised not only in the church, not only by our mother, but by all the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we prepare for our time of prayer together, I would uh, ask you to keep in mind those prayers that you have uh, for persons in need, for situations that are on your heart. Um, and remember that you can send prayers in uh, to me by email um, or by text uh, for inclusion on Sunday mornings was uh, asked this week that we hold Bay Bluffs in our prayers um, as an important institution within our community that cares for those who are in need of, of extra nursing care. Um, but they are, they are struggling like many places in our community right now, financially and, and emotionally uh, because of the pandemic. So please keep uh, Bay Bluffs in your prayers. And uh, please pray with me. We worship you, Jesus, our Savior. You conquered death by your cross. You are the stone the builders rejected. But you have become the cornerstone. Make us into living stones in your church, our mother. We pray to you for all Christians everywhere. May they live in the joy of the resurrection and be a visible sign of your presence by their mutual love. We pray to you for the leaders of your church as they celebrate the, the reality of resurrection with all your servants. May they be strengthened for your service and may they have wisdom for uh, worshiping well in this time. We pray to you for the leaders of the nations, God. May they exercise their office of, as servants of justice and peace, providing for and caring for those entrusted to their care. Jesus, we pray to you for all who are suffering, suffering from illness or grief, from old age, from exile from loneliness and cabin fever, from depression and discouragement. Lord, may your resurrection be a source of comfort and aid for them and for us. And now, Lord, hear those prayers that we um, have in our hearts as I leave a time of silence.
Lord God, hear our prayer. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, this morning as we prepare to receive our offering, we do so recognizing that these are difficult times, that there are many of us who have been uh, furloughed, who have been released from our jobs, many others who are working reduced hours, and um, it, is, it is a challenging time. And so I ask that, uh, one, if, you, if you're in need, uh, reach out. We do have a discretionary fund that we can use to help out, um, but we need to know. And also that if, you, um, if you're doing well, that you give what you can um, so that we can help those in need. Uh, we are seeking to um, especially help with, uh, uh, with food scarcity in our area and helping with extra donations to the food bank and the Mana Food Project. But also remember that our offering is much more than money. We are here to offer our very selves to our God for the purposes of his kingdom. And so whatever you are offering this morning, do so with joy and with gratitude. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ways that you provide. We thank you for the ways that you take care of us, the ways that we, we know about, the ways that we don't even see. Um, we pray that as we bring forth um, these offerings to you, whether they be offerings of uh, finances or time, or compassion. We pray that they will be used um, to glorify you and to further your kingdom. I pray all of these things in your precious name. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to um, head into our day, may we find ourselves nourished by the church, by our mother, and we, may we find ourselves maturing in our faith that we might be a mothering presence in the lives of one another and those around us. And let us go with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on and abide in us today and every day. Hallelujah and Amen. Free.